back here with my coronavirus lesson home package series and we're looking at scales used in country guitar playing. So in my first video I did on this I talked about how I approach soloing in country music and I explained how I don't really think about scales when I'm playing. I think about the chord and I let my ear guide me through the sounds of the chord that I want to express or explore in my solo. But I realized that although I talked about chords and some of the notes and chords, that still might be a little bit vague or it might not be the way a lot of people approach improvising. So I'm going to talk about the actual scales that you use if you're going to solo over, you know, your standard country stuff, Folsom Prison, Blues, that type of repertoire. There are really kind of three scales that get used, I would say more or less equally in thirds. And there's no kind of hard and fast rule about what scale you should use at any given time it's an artistic one but if you were to take a say a brett mason solo or an albert lee solo you would hear a pretty even distribution of these three scales first scale is the major pentatonic scale and these are in no particular order second scale is the mixolydian scale and the third scale would be the blues scale so again if we keep with a major the a major pentatonic scale would have the note A, it has a second or a ninth B, it has the third degree, that's basically it, so you get one, two, three, three is the C sharp, five, which is going to be an E, six, which is an F sharp, the major six, and then you get the tonic again. it is it has on a number of strings at least a symmetrical kind of uh, voicing I guess so you can slide if you do it in the fifth position index finger goes here on five you can slide from seven to nine and then you're just going across doing the same thing five seven sorry nine Also the scale that Hendrix gets a lot of his cool double stops. So whenever you hear stuff like that's what Hendrix is using. He does a different interpretation of double stops over there. This scale is really cool because it hits a lot of the essential notes without going in near any sort of potentially fraught notes. So I talked in the last video about how sevenths uh, need to be considered. Major seventh is usually avoided. It sounds too, it's too potent. It's too strongly major. And the dominant seventh sounds great with certain feels and certain grooves and if anything's kind of bluesy, but other than that it can be a little bit too powerful as well. So there are licks you'll often hear, Brent Mason does this quite a lot, he'll go that lick. That is open A string, and I'm going to slide from the second to the fourth degree of the A string. So that's going from O to four, and their scales degree one, two, three. Then I go up to the second fret of the D string, which is the fifth scale degree, then back to the fourth fret of the A, the third degree of the A major chord. Then I go up to the fourth fret of the D string. G, which is the second degree of the scale or the ninth up to six and that's the major third now but we would call that a tenth in music because it's now an octave away from the original tonic note then we go to the fifth fret of the B string which is the fifth degree of an A major scale up to the seventh fret of the B string which is that F sharp our major six and then to the tonic <laughs> with that as well of course you I sort of base my intro kind of on that that kind of thing it 
it gets a very major, sweet, happy country sound without any really potent notes because the sevenths aren't there. The next one's the blue scale. I think most people know the blue scale. The blue scale is cool because it, it gives you spice to your playing. The thing to remember is if you play too much blue scale stuff, it sounds like they booked a blues guitar player. And there's no rule, no hard and fast rule about how much blue scale stuff you should do, but I would try and keep it minimal. I mean, it's used a lot, but I would probably spice up something with a, like a proper bluesy lick, maybe once a chorus. If you do too much of it like that, then it just sounds like Stevie Ray Vaughan turned up to a gig in Nashville, which could be cool, but for your standard lower Broadway covers country gigs, it's probably not appropriate too much, even though it's one of the big three. So, you know, you'll hear country country fried blues licks these are sort of johnny highland ones where he'll do things like this and he can play that pretty quick right so i might go i'll throw that pull off that i didn't mean to do in f3 so basically what's happening there is i'm kind of going eight seven five so it's already not like a strict blue scale, I've got a ninth in there. Then I go down to the eighth fret of the B string and then I hit the tonic again. And I do the same thing on the B string. And then I'm gonna go to the blues note, the E flat here. And then I'm gonna pull off seven to five. There's your real bluesy sound. From that point, you can do whatever you want. You could go into a major pentatonic lick, you could go into a country band. I just went down a blues scale the first time I played it. Now, guiding principle in a lot of country stuff, if there's a note that can be played as an open string, play it as an open string. You can really pop it, it sounds different, and it gives you a chance to move position if you want to move position. So here, I would normally be going seven, six, five, notes being E, E flat, D, but the D is an open string, right? And I want to get down here, so I'm gonna go down pluck, pull off, middle finger pop the D string, and then get down to work. I did a slight variation of a major pentatonic lick. Again, in the first video I talked about using chromaticism, where I'm taking notes from A minor, that modal interchange uh, concept that I talked about, and I did that right there. So I went minor third to major third, fifth the fourth, and then pull off minor third, minor third's gravitational pull down to the tonic is much stronger than that of the major third. So often when I'm descending, I will go minor third, ninth or second to the tonic rather than major third, ninth tonic. Something about the descending major third just sounds a bit too classical and happy. And country music, as we all know, is not such a happy genre. The last one is the dominant seventh scale. Now the dominant seventh scale, also known as a mixolydian scale, is essentially just a major scale. So it's very similar to the major pentatonic scale. The only difference being it has a flat seven degree in there. So you're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven. So in the key of A, that would be A is your tonic, B is your ninth or your second, C sharp is your third, D is your fourth, fifth is your E, F sharp is your sixth, and then you get a G. And that's a really potent note. I talked about in the first video, it's like Cajun spices. It's awesome, but in the wrong context, it might be a bit too powerful. It's very close to a blue scale. The, the Mixolydian scale kind of straddles the territory between major pentatonic and blue scale. It has a bit of both of those worlds. And it is used quite a bit. You'll hear licks, it'll go. That. That's mixolydian, because I'm bending the fifth degree up while holding the flat seven. Anytime you hear one of those A licks that goes, it's mixolydian because they popped a G, right? The G is the flat seven, so. So the lick I did before, if you're gonna do a couple of really cool um, 60s Mill Haggard uh, pedal steel kind of licks. You might go 
pinky on the ninth fret of the high E string, middle finger on the eighth fret of the B string, and you're gonna pre-bend that tone to get that tritone bend that's bending down to a seventh. We're implying that A7 chord. So I go, then, so I'm bending up to the major six on the G while hitting the seventh. approach those three scales again I'm not playing them purely intellectually it's my ear that is guiding me through this and because I don't think about scales when I'm playing it just happens that most of my stuff is derived from these scales so I gave you an example of a few licks that borrow heavily from each of these different scales but I can't stress enough how you really want to develop the ability orally to hear what you want to play and to be able to pick those different notes, knowing what a seventh sounds like, knowing what a third sounds like. And there's so much great repertoire out there. I, I think I've even seen a Spotify playlist of like great Brent Mason solos. There's hundreds of them. Check them out. Albert Lee, James Mitchell, Johnny Hyland, Danny Gatton, Vince Gill, the list goes on and on. These guys all have their own sound, but they're still deriving things from the same language. So you can learn a lot from listening to them. And I really encourage you to transcribe solos. I learned a lot from doing that when I was a kid. Take a solo you like, for example, Lies of Jane by Vince Gill, it's in this key. And it goes up to C. And his solo is very heavily borrowing from those three scales. I think the first lick is like... similar to that there's actually a live version that the players do and Brent Mason does a solo as well and you get the best of both worlds Vince kills it Brent does an, an incredible solo and you know Brent's solo is a little bit heavier on the Mixolydian thing but maybe break it down and learn a couple of licks and then really think about it like what are the notes that they're playing oh and what's the chord that's being playing join the dots and then once you've worked out what that is it's going to resonate far more than anything I tell you. When you work out stuff for yourself, it just gets tattooed into your memory. When someone tells you, it can just sort of wash over you. But if you work it out like that and you go, ah, oh, he played a seventh, that's a really cool lick, then the next time you hear it, you'll know what it is. So I'm gonna do a couple more videos, probably connecting chords, playing through changes, building a solo, but these are the scales that are used most of the time. When I play more jazz-inspired country music, I'm still using these scales, but there are more jazz lines that I'm building out of these scales. I've got a series of videos on constructing jazz lines. I think I've got three or four of them. They're on my YouTube channel. That's the, the information that you need if you want to do that kind of stuff. Build upon what I've talked about in this lesson with those lines and how to create those lines. And voila, you have jazz country stuff, which is more just it's pure jazz with a country tone really if you're thinking about it so please subscribe hit the bell stay tuned while we're all being quarantined and kept inside i'm going to have a bunch of lessons just to keep everyone interested because i know a lot of my friends out there are really hurting they got no gigs so i just want to try and raise awareness of musicians out there who aren't doing so well in these tough times and also just Keep people interested. I think people are going to get rather bored sticking around home for who knows how long. Please hit me up on Instagram at the Rev Doctor Z and give us a like on Facebook. Join the forum on my Facebook artist page and just send me a request. You want a video? Want me to do a, a lesson on a particular guitar-related topic? I'd love to hear from you and uh, I'd like to make that video. So thanks for tuning in. Stay safe, and I'll catch you soon.